Hi friends! The kids are down, the monitor's on, and tonight we're drinking Civil Strife and talking hobbies after hobbits. It's beer after bedtime. Let's get to it. All right, friends, tonight's beer is Civil Strife. You get a look at that there. Uh, very interesting artwork it's got on there. Uh, it is made by Iron Fire Brewery in Temecula, California, and it is a pale stout beer with an 8% ABV and zero IBUs. So this thing should be crazy sweet. Um, it's a pale stout, which is not something that I've ever heard of before. I mean, I'm not just getting into beer, but you know, most of my stouts are, you know, as black as the night and a pale stout seems wrong, but salted caramel sounds right. It also says it's a white Russian stout, which makes me think of Big Lebowski, which is vodka and milk, I think. Um, not quite sure how that's going to play out. Let's see what Iron Fire says about this. They say it's a salted caramel white Russian stout, an experimental pale stout brewed with fresh vanilla beans, San Diego Roasters coffee beans, Mediterranean sea salt, and organic stevia. It's another one that's listed as organic. Uh, it's interesting. It's nice to see that stuff cropping up. So let's crack this. It's a tall boy. So I've got to be careful not to pour the whole thing out, but let's get a look at this. I actually pour it properly this week. Oh my, that is pale. Okay, we're not going to tip it over. So let's see that you can see it. It is hazy. So still you know, stout-ish in that you can't see through it at all, um, but very golden in color. Uh, no head on that at all, you can see. I didn't, uh, I didn't pour it as badly as I did the banana stout last week, but that's, that's nothing. You got like a lacy ring, and that's it. All right. Well, it looks great. It looks more like a, I would expect a Hefeweizen to look like. Let's give it a smell. Uh, definitely smells sweet and there's not a not a lot of hop smell yeah I'm not getting much of anything off of that initially all right let's give it a try there's the caramel right away still a lot of like honey sweetness it's got to be the stevia um, okay, a little bit of salt towards the back end. At first, it's like big punch of caramel in your face, which I don't mind. Um, some other reviewers talked about um, the mouth feel. I can definitely, I gotta work it around a lot. It does feel very thick. Like Guinness is the, the go-to stout. Um, sorry if I offend anybody with that, but that's mine. Um, and I definitely feel thick. It feels like, you know, Guinness, you're drinking a meal. And this definitely has that coating to it. It's very, very sweet though. Uh, with no IBUs, I, I don't doubt it. There's no bitterness in that at all. That is, that is definitely a very tasty beer. Uh, definitely a dessert beer. I don't know that I would drink more than one can of this. This would be like sort of, oh guys, you gotta try this one and then probably move on to something else as opposed to, you know, a traditional Guinness after Guinness after Guinness until you have strange accents and here are my keys. Uh, but it's good. I like it. I don't know. Uh, give you final impressions after a few more pulls there. Uh, in the meantime, let's talk hobbies after hobbits. Now, before you get all Lord of the Rings on me, I know hobbits are a special species. They're not a stage of development, but they're short and so are my kids. So leave me alone. Um, mostly I want to talk about loss of identity. When you become a dad, let's move these around. When you become a dad, a lot of stuff falls by the wayside because they're just, 
There just isn't time for it anymore. And a lot of people identify themselves by their hobbies, you know. For me, um, I'm a lot of things. I'm a gamer, I'm a hiker. Um, I hate to say actor as a hobby, but I'm an actor. Um, I do a lot of reading and things like that that I just don't get the time for anymore. But I still consider myself those things and the loss of them with the first kid and then the second kid is painful. It's hard. There's a lot of um, concern about getting back to that. And I want to let dads out there know, moms too, that it does come around and it, it tends to evolve. I'm a gamer, okay? I had an Atari 2600 back when you could get those at Goodwill instead of at vintage stores for hundreds of dollars. Um, and I moved through a lot of different consoles and things. And when my first kid was born, I had a PS3. And we were using that for our streaming services. That was back when you had to have a disc uh, for Netflix, which is crazy to think about now. Um, and, and gaming, you know, playing a lot of video games on the weekends after work and stuff. After the kids, uh, it became a dedicated streaming box. Um, the controllers, I just ordered a remote like it was a TV and they all gathered dust for a long time. And then I started picking up my mobile phone more. Uh, mobile games have definitely come up from uh, Snake. And since then, uh, it's mostly been mobile. I was lucky enough to get a Switch uh, at the beginning, just before the pandemic panic Switch buyout sort of thing happened. Um, and that's what it's turned into. Instead of marathon sessions where you're cracking two liters, um, you know, baking up some pizza rolls and stuff, it's now all about uh, bite-sized pieces. Um, I play games that have missions that have like short amounts of things you can pick up and put down. Uh, most recently, it was Saints Row the Third. You know, you jump in a car, you go do a mission, you end the mission, you're like, ah, oh, great. That was 10, 15 minutes. I can go to bed now. You know, I got some in. Um, we also have a phone that we keep um, that my wife and I use for mobile gaming that makes its way around the house here and there. Uh, but it's separate from our regular phones because. You know, you drain the battery sitting there trying to play the farm game or uh, Clash Royale all day long. Not all day long, bits and pieces here and there. So it keeps it a little bit separate and it makes it available to stash in the bathroom when you're hiding from the kids and want to just zone out for five minutes. So it's all about bite-sized chunks. I'm still a gamer. Um, I've got the Switch. I've got a bunch of games I'm looking forward to playing when time becomes available. Um, but it evolved. Uh, and I think that's gonna be the case with a lot of these um, hobbies that I talk about. Uh, it's just an evolution of it. You're not losing who you are. You're just becoming a little bit different version of yourself. And I, I really look forward to the day when my kids can pick up a controller. Uh, mostly right now what's on the horizon I think is rock band. Rock band or just guitar hero, I'm very excited. I've got the system set up. I just got to bring it upstairs and plug it in when I think they're ready. They're not quite there yet. I give it maybe a year and I really hope that the console that it plays on holds out. It's a 360, so it's a little iffy. Um, but if it doesn't, I'll put in the money for whatever it takes to get them a taste of it. Because kids learn from this stuff. Maybe not rock band. Uh, but the other day, I was playing a, a solitaire game on my phone and my daughter wanted to check it out and see what was going on. So I let her watch over my shoulder and she's like, Daddy, how do you play this game? How do you do it? And we actually ended up learning numbers pretty well from solitaire as long as you just stop at 10 and don't try and convince them that 11 is Jack, Queen, King at, at school. Um, but she learned it and so I was like, hey, I've got an eight. What do you play on an eight? And we got to work through those things. Um, so there's a lot of gamification in learning these days, but there's also a lot of learning you can get just from video games. So I'm looking forward to that and seeing how that can adapt. And if they pick it up, great. If they don't, that's fine. But I'm, I'm really looking forward to that opportunity.
All right, friends, would I drink more of this? The Civil Strife Salted Caramel White Russian Stout. Absolutely. I don't get any White Russian out of it. The White Russian might just be the pale part of it that they're trying to play off there. Um, you know, I don't taste any, obviously, vodka or cream in there, but I like it. It's definitely, um, it's not as bubbly as, uh, you know, your usual lager uh, because it's a stout, but it doesn't have, I don't know, it doesn't have the bite that I expect from a stout, but definitely the thickness. Um, I don't know that I would purchase it again, honestly. This is not my uh, particular cup of tea, but it is tasty and I don't mind it. I just can't picture myself in a situation, you know, at a bar, going through a bottle shop where I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta have that stuff again. Uh, but it's good. Uh, I like it. Uh, so drink it, absolutely. Buy more? Probably not. All right, folks, thanks for joining me. Next week, we're going to have first snow. Uh, I'll shoot a picture of it right here, if that's possible, of it. Uh, maybe I'll do that out in the snow. We've got snow here right now. I could, you know, bundle up warm, get outside, and crack some cans. Uh, but until next time, finish your beer, get some sleep. Cheers. Yes, I'm definitely going to finish this tonight. I'm going to save a little bit for the missus. So she, whew, I'm going to save a little bit for the... Put that back down.